This is the IR embedded workbench for Renesas Synergy with full integration. This means it has the standalone Synergy configurator and the SSP package directly available from the IR ID. So it's straightforward uh, to work uh, with the professional tools, tools from IR. So we have a well-known uh, optimized compiler included and available here. And you also have the state-of-the-art debugger available for you. So under project, create new projects, you can create uh, your new project, throw the wizard. You just have to follow the step-by-step, -step, select the board and the components that you want to use. And once this is ready, you get uh, the project ready with all uh, the configurations available. So you can see here that there is already a device selected. There is also a linker file available for us. And under the debugger options, we have, of course, uh, support for the JLink onboard that it's available on most of the SK and DK boards. But you can also use the IR powerful uh, debug probes like iJet and iJet Trace. In order to use the advanced capabilities of Renesas Synergy devices, you have to make sure that you are choosing the right connection interface. So we have to make sure that we are selecting the SWD. And of course, under the setup tab, we need to set here uh, the trace clock under the CPU uh, clock settings. This will be used for the SWO itself. And to make some print uh, options a bit faster, we also need to select here uh, the low-level implementation via SWO. This means STD out and STD error will be sent out to SWO. From here, we are ready uh, to build uh, our project. And uh, of course, depending on uh, the size of your uh, application and the components that you are adding, uh, for example, if you are adding the source code, uh, we have the full support uh, for the decryption uh, of uh, the encrypted uh, files. So this means you can see uh, the Artos, the ThreadX uh, components while uh, debugging, but you can only see the source code, but there is no way uh, to change uh, the source code. Once the build is ready, I can just uh, download the application to the target. Of course, make sure uh, to connect the USB cable uh, to the right uh, connector. From here, you have full control of your debug session. And of course, you can just step over, step into, step out, leave the application running. And then, of course, once you reach some uh, protected source code, this is uh, the way it looks. Uh, you can see the source code, but you cannot copy or modify uh, this uh, source code. And from here, once you enter into the debug session, uh, you can just step on the source code, I mean on the C or C++, or even uh, on the disassembly uh, window. And uh, what we also have available here under view, you'll get access uh, to uh, the memory window. So if you just add a symbol or an address here, it will take you directly uh, to that address. You can also have access here to the watch window or even, uh, for example, even better, the live watch. So if you want to monitor variables while the application is running, you can just uh, add the, your global variable here. But notice that you can also add uh, some arithmetic uh, operations here. So depending on what you need, it will also be displayed here. Additionally, of course, we also have uh, the stack window, call stack, everything that it's available during the bug session, it's uh, available directly here. Additionally, with IR, we also have the Artos Awareness plugin. So once you enable it under the debug options, it will appear here under the thread X options. So you can see, for example, the thread X uh, list. I mean, uh, all the threads that are running. Uh, if there is uh, some uh, message on the queue, semaphores, mutex, and so on are available directly here. So the live watch window mainly gives you the opportunity to see the value changing here while our application it's running. But uh, of course, the same feature is available here on the memory window. So if you click here on the live update, 
you will be able to monitor the variable directly on the memory address. So if I leave this application running, you can see that the value of the memory is being updated uh, for you. Uh, additionally, if you have uh, some print statement in your application, so let's say that inside your uh, task you have like a simple print statement, this will be redirected automatically to terminal I.O. So once you leave your application running, this information will be printed to the terminal I.O. So no need to redirect it to the serial interface, uh, for example. There is also a really straightforward way of doing some time measurement. So if you want to find out how much time you are spending uh, on a function or in between uh, some lines of code, you can come here to JLink and then we have a timeline. This is of course also available for iJet if you work with the iJet Pro. Under the timeline, we have this events option and once you enable it and run uh, this application, we should be able to see uh, this uh, information directly on the timeline. So once you adjust uh, the zooming here with uh, the minus and the plus, you will see here the options, uh, how it looks. We should have a few uh, ITM events uh, being uh, triggered. Of course, it's just a matter of figuring out here the zoom. And uh, the way it works in this case, uh, I'm mainly measuring uh, the time uh, in between uh, the LED uh, blinking. As you can see, you can use the ITM events that uh, it's available here directly uh, on the ARM ITM. This capability, it's available through the SWO uh, pin. So once you select here the two events that I'm uh, generating between the LED blink, I can tell you that uh, it's taking exactly one second or one uh, hertz. So this is a straightforward way of doing a measurement here uh, on how long you are spending in between these lines or if you need to figure out the performance of a function. Uh, additionally, you can also uh, enable interrupts. So you have here on the timeline the capability of logging interrupts. So if you enable the interrupt log and leave this application running for a while, you can see that we are logging the information here of the interrupts. And even better, if you want to have uh, the information on how much time you are spending inside the interrupt, you just have to select uh, this interrupt directly here. And of course, I can just change the zoom. And we have T1 and T2. In this case, we are spending 88 microseconds or 106 cycles inside uh, this cystic interrupt. Uh, with IR, uh, you can also have very powerful uh, breakpoints. So, of course, by just clicking here on a line of code, we will have uh, the application stopping every time we reach uh, that line, but we can make it much better. So, if you go to view breakpoints, we have uh, this. A breakpoint being displayed here. Uh, it's straightforward to just disable a breakpoint. You don't have to delete it. You can just click here on the flag. But what uh, we want to do is actually uh, to make it a complex breakpoint. So what I can do is just, just set counter bigger than 10. So the way it works, it's now a condition. And we can, of course, monitor uh, the value here again. Let me just delete what I don't need here. So if I leave this application running, this breakpoint will only be valid once the counter reaches 11, that's bigger than 10. So this is a conditional breakpoint, but of course we can also set data breakpoints. So if I right click here on the breakpoint and set data breakpoint, uh, I will get the information here under view breakpoints. It's how it appears here. But of course, if you right click on the breakpoint window, you have all other options available, log, uh, trace start and stop and so on if I have a trace probe. But in this case, let's focus on the data breakpoint. If I just click here on edit, I have the option to define this breakpoint to be just a read write or just read and or read and write, write, read or write. Let's say if I want to have this read option and I want to make it match with some data, let's say 
five. So this means that this breakpoint will only be valid once uh, this uh, address reaches five. I can click here. Of course, I need to reset the counter. And once I leave this application running, and I have a read operation, and the value is five, it's stopping uh, the application. It's a straightforward way uh, to work here with the IR IDE. You have full control of your application. You have all the powerful capabilities uh, available. It's just a matter of generating your project, connect the board, and start using uh, all uh, the features. So to summarize, I can tell you that with IR, you have a powerful compiler available for you. So if you look here under the compiler options, under the optimization, you can use high speed or balanced uh, or size optimization. Uh, additionally, uh, you can uh, also mix C and uh, C++. So you can use the SSP in C and write your application in C++. So it can auto detect the extension here. And when it comes to debugging, as you saw, uh, you can use the Jlink onboard or even the iJet and iJet trace. That is a high uh, performance uh, debugging probe with all uh, the capabilities that you should have available to find out in an easy way if there is a bug or even investigate some strange behavior on your application.